Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm Katie. And welcome to Last TV Gaming News, bringing you all the Korean game news straight from South Korea. There's new content coming to the Korean Lineage 2 service this summer, and this update is bringing the Halloween spirit a little early with the game's latest playable class, the Death Knight. The Death Knight is described as a powerhouse tank class with a variety of spells at their disposal, including an affinity for pyrotechnics. The update will also include a new server as well as updated UI and graphics and a new auto farm function. The Death Knight will be available on Korean servers with the update on August 14th. There's no word on when the update will reach Western servers, but we'll keep you posted with any updates. Kaka Games has released another trailer for their upcoming title, Tarot Classic, showcasing the MMO's game features ahead of its launch next week. Tarot Classic is yet another mobile spin-off of a PC IP title that seems to be so popular in Korea these days, and takes place 20 years before the events of the PC original Terra. The new game features trailer shows off the game's world maps, bosses, questing, and the PvP arena. Terra Classic will be available in Korea next Tuesday on the 13th. There hasn't been any news regarding the potential global release, but stay tuned and we'll be sure to keep you updated. And as one game prepares to launch, another closes, as NC has announced that it will be ending service for the mobile action RPG Lineage Red Knights. Lineage Red Knights was the first mobile spin-off of the Lineage IP, originally released back in December 2016. The game came out of the gate strong by topping iOS charts at its release, but has since fallen off of top 500 lists as its concept grew further and further from the ever-evolving Lineage IP. NC will end its service for Lineage Red Knights on August 30th, but grieving players will still have Lineage M and the incoming Lineage 2M to get their Lineage fix on mobile. There's some good news surrounding a server closure for once, as Nexon and Devcat have enabled their student to close Ascendant 1 to continue as a single player. Ascendant 1 launched in South Korea in early access mode just last September, but the top player MOBA based on sci-fi Greek gods failed to catch on, and Nexon announced that they will be closing the server not even a year into its service. It's rare that a game might lose its closure, but Devcat have given Ascendant 1 a lifeline in the game's final update, which enables the game to run without a client-server connection. This standalone functionality will allow players to continue playing Ascendant 1 as a single-player experience, long after the dedicated service ends. Nexon has been making moves since its failed sale, including acquiring a new Western base and appointing a new leader of Nexon's Western development strategy, Patrick Sudolim. Nexon pushed to increase its existing stake in Embark Studios, moving to a complete acquisition of the studio over a five-year period. Embark will now serve as the base for driving Nexon's Western projects and is led by the rather controversial choice of Patrick Sudolom. Sudolom is well known in the industry as a former EA executive and well known most recently in the industry for his involvement in EA's car crash anthem. In a now notorious expose, Sutherland was revealed to have been involved in many of the decisions that led to one of modern gaming's most infamous development disasters. It's early days, but there have already been several layoffs at Nexon America since the announcement. As always, we'll keep tabs on the situation and let you know of any developments. There's one more week of Contenders Korea 2019 Season 2, but before everything wraps up, let's review Week 6 and take a look at the standing implications going into the final week of the regular season. Week 6 opened with our Game of the Week, a matchup between the top two spots, O2 Blast and Gen G. I think everyone expected it to be a lot closer than it turned out, as O2 asserted their dominance as this season's Titans and took a 4-0 victory, guaranteeing their first place qualification spot. The second match of the evening was a must-win for Fusion Uni, whose 3-1 win against Mental Athena managed to put a little more distance between their 6th place and relegation. Day 2 began with a relatively swift 4-0 victory for GC Busan Wave against WGS, with the 4 map wins allowing GC Busan to break away from Runaway in the standings. The week closed with the closest match of the 4, with Runaway and Element Mystic going toe-to-toe -to -toe throughout the entire set. It came down to the very last stage of map 5, Nepal, where Runaway managed to edge it out and take the 3-2 win. So the results from week 6 mean that both the top and bottom spots have been confirmed, with WGS coming in last and being relegated to trials, and O2 Blast qualifying in first and locking in a place in the playoff semi-finals. Gen G's loss means that it's a possibility that GC Busan or Runaway sneak in for second place and the second semi-final spot next week, and the last qualification spot for playoffs is down to Fusion Uni and Meta Athena. 
I know we usually say if you can only watch one game next week, but every game in week 7 has the potential bearing on the last playoff spot where that semi-final head start, so all four shouldn't really be missed. But that is like 8 hours, so if you really can only watch one, then make it Element Mystic vs Fusion Uni. Fusion need as many maps as possible here to beat Meta Athena to qualify, and Meta Athena have a much easier go of it against WGX. Element Mystic may not be in prime shape, but there are no pushovers, so good luck, Fusion. It's too hot to be outside, so it's better to find something to do indoors this August. Nexen is hosting Invite You Gaming exhibition in Jongno, so why not visit and check it out? The Invite You exhibit celebrates the 25th anniversary of Korean online gaming and showcases the past, present, and future of Korean online games. It was put together by the Nexon Computer Museum, which showcases the history of computer and game culture, and the Nexon Intelligence Labs, which studies AI and data to make industry projections. The exhibit is being held at the Art Sonje Center in Jongno. Admission is free, and the exhibit will be open until September 1st. That's it for today. See you guys all next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.